I want to share, they say I mustn't say quickly because I'm lying. Um, I want to share and let's see where we go. Hallelujah. With a theme that says what? What's the major word there on the, on the piece of paper that you received? While. Anybody? While. Since or while. While. Okay, my brother, my sister, while certain things are happening, uh, certain other things will happen. Right, you got it? Okay, go home. Thank you. <coughs> I see we still need attention. Everybody here? Oh, everybody alive here? Thank you. Praise the Lord. Now, what I want to say is, you know when you want to start to drive the car? Um, you must learn a lot of stuff. Now, oh, my English must help me now. So when you put in the clutch, first the clutch, then you go for the f first red, for the first gear, hey? And then if you're going to start, you cannot just focus on the starter. <laughs> you cannot just focus on the second, third, fourth, fifth. Six. Her. You cannot just focus on that. You must learn how to focus on the one and the other one and the other one and the other one. So while you are putting in the clutch, you must start. While that, you must think of, is it first gear? While that, you must think of what do you see around you. While that, you're supposed to sit in the car. While that, the door is supposed to be closed. Hello? But sometimes in the Christian walk, not in the future anymore, we don't get beyond clutch. Now let's say clutch in is get your prayer life in order. Because if your prayer life is in order, maybe you will not seize the engine, maybe you will not ah, struggle with a first gear or a second gear, and it doesn't work, certain things don't work in your life. You know, just put, just do that with your feet, clutch in. And then one, two, three, four, five, six will flow. Gee, that's it. I'm not saying pray and everything is just happy go lucky. But what I'm saying, there's certain basic principles. Why can we understand it with driving a car, but we cannot understand it in the past, not in the future anymore, with driving a life with God? Are you with me? You need to take hold of the steering wheel. Not of the seat and the door. The steering wheel. That's obvious. Okay? How's the guidance of the Spirit in your life? How are you going according to the word that God has given you about your finances? The word that God has given you about the relationship? The word God has given you about your challenges? About maybe a fear? It's what is God saying about your success? What is God saying about the failures of the past? You're, you're going with the word. You're going with the word that God has given you. And with that, it's like you took hold of this steering wheel. Are you with me? No, I, I just leave it. You know, I'm busy with this, I'm busy with that. And then the car goes off the road and you scream out. And by God's grace, by the third scripture that you got, you realize, you know, I need to take hold of the wheel and bring it back, steering wheel. And then you get busy with some stuff and you leave. leave the steering wheel to go wherever the, the circumstances would go. Are you with me? And too many times we are just messing up the whole time. Trying to learn to do a lot of stuff. While you are sitting, while the clutch is in, while this, while that. There's a hundred things to think about. But you know, in the beginning you would stress about driving the car because I must think about this, I must think about that, think about the indicator, I must think about... Only me, maybe you will in the beginning, right, 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 right in the beginning. Especially when you went, when you were not supposed to go on the farm with the bucky. Yeah, hallelujah. Then there's maybe some stress. <clears throat> but the more... You start to understand a dynamic. Today, when you get in the car, you're not going to stress about it. You're going to think about other things. 
You're going to speak about this, you're going to look at that, and, you know, do a lot of stuff. But it's not just stress thing, this driving thing. Because you establish certain things in your life where it's just part of you. You establish prayer, you establish the word. You establish the fact that I will go with what the word says. I need to know what God is saying. You establish the thing of when you get in the car, in the beginning you had to choose that. <coughs> like choose to think about when was I accelerate and when I accelerate, you cannot accelerate without taking your foot off the otherwise you just ah are you really going for it with you going nowhere. You've seen that in your life sometimes, you, you're going with it with God, you know, you're praying and you're standing and you, you're going absolutely nowhere. You're, I'm burned out. Burned out because of stupidity. Doesn't mean that somebody that's burned out is because of stupidity, I'm just saying. Sometimes, you know, the devil can also get confused by looking at our lives. What is that guy trying to do? <laughs> Not even the devil knows. Come on. But if I start to learn certain dynamics, the question is, while this is happening, this is also supposed to happen. My brother, my sister, while God is doing this, what are you doing? While stress is trying to do this in your life, what are you doing? While circumstances are going to the left, what are you doing? But there will always be a while. There will always be a while. You cannot wait while I'm full of this and this. When this stops, then only I can do that. No. Wise virgin, God expects you to do certain things. God expects you to do certain things while they're still shaking. While. Because in the future, the shaking and the stuff is just going to get worse. The, 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 the sickness of situations of her. Male, female, and what, are, what the other 20, how many things you I can identify with. The more freaky, the more freaky, it will just become more freaky. Foolishness, the wisdom of the world is foolishness with God. So there will be more people standing up and think they are so wise. There will be a wisdom of, no, you may, this is the human right. But the, the more the wisdom of the world will rise, the more the foolishness will be exposed. It will. And it will be seen in the light of the word. You will see, but this is such foolishness. But me and you, we will also be deceived if I don't learn how to establish this whole thing of clutch prayer and this, that, and sensitivity and guidance from the Lord and, and <coughs> certain strategy, first gear strategy. Fifth gear strategy. You can go up the mountain and you are, you are in a fifth gear strategy. You can have all the rest right. You can have a prayer life right. You can accelerate. You can focus. You can have your eyes on the road. You are fixed with your focus by faith. You have in the guidance from God. But you're in a fifth gear. You're going to mess it up. Why? But I need to need I need God's wisdom how to learn for a life of significance. I want to call it a life of significance. There can be such significance in your life that in spite of what you go through, you can write that a life of significance. That you need to go and learn while you are working. And I want you please to go and make a list. What are you doing while you are working? What is God doing while you are working? What is the devil doing while you are working? So while I'm working, I'm doing something. What does that mean? I'm working. No, that doesn't mean you are really working. While you are working, you can decide that I was stressed in my work. And after you finish, you're tired from the work. No, you're tired because stress controlled the work. Are you with me? While you are working, you decide, I will do this for the Lord. While you are working, you will work not just for the Lord, but you will work with the Lord. 
Amen? What are we talking about? That what we said a thousand times. We will rule and reign forever and ever with God as? Anybody here? <coughs> kings and priests. Forever we will rule and reign with God as kings and priests. When God took Israel out of Egypt, He said to them, He took them to the mountain and said, Now we are going with what I promised you and all your ancestors. We are going for Canaan. Yay! And there they go. No. Nonsense. He didn't say that. When he took them out, he said, I, I, took, I bore you from, on, on eagle's wings and I brought you to myself. You are, in part identity, in part identity, in the place of, of slavery, in the place of whatever circumstances could, told, could tell you you're a slave of this and you're nothing. He imparts identity, first of all, when he brought them out. He says, you are a kingdom of priests. You are my special treasure. A kingdom of priests. But they didn't understand what it means. How to be a kingdom of priests. Everything being messed up. At the end of the day. Jesus came. Yes. Jesus died. Raised. Seated. In heaven. And then later. Peter came. And he said. You are a kingdom of priests. A kingdom of priests. <coughs> then John the Revelation. You will reign with God as kings and priests. As kings. With a king of kings because you're a king with a king of kings he's king over all the kings and he's high priest over all the priests are you with me but as king you stand with authority you can write that as priest you stand with intimacy remember that as a king you stand with authority as a Priest, you stand with intimacy. Well, where are we going? Rule with God. Now we say in the word, we say in our hearts, we say in our lifestyle, I will work for the Lord and I will work with the Lord. Some people say, no, I'm not working for the Lord, I'm working with the Lord. Uh, maybe they want to stress the point, but that's not the truth. <coughs> it's both. Whatever you do, do it as if unto the Lord, the Bible says. So you do it for him, but as a what? As a priest, I will do it for him. As a priest, I'm worshipping him. And what I do, I do it for him. As a priest. Hallelujah. Thank you. As a priest. Are you with me? As a king, I do it with him. With authority, I go in the name of Jesus. And I work with him. If you don't work with him, you have no authority if you don't work it with him. Are you with me? You know the principles of authority, but authority doesn't really work if you don't do it with him. So as with authority, king, with the king of kings, you better rule, sit in high places, looking down in you, into your situation. Okay? Look down into your situation. Something there, you tell it, that mountain become a plain. You walk over it. As a king. And as a priest... How will I do it for the Lord today? And all of that is while I want to stress. I say, no, I will praise you, Lord. But it's not like now I must just choose. I must choose to focus on the clutch. No. I've established it. <coughs> I'm, I'm with other things, busy. My, my feet just know. Clutch, brake, and accelerate. And next gear. You, you, it's just part of you. So during the day, God, I love you, it's just part of your vocabulary. It's just part of your, what you say. It's just part of that other guy in the world that pertin, pertin, pert. It's part of his vocabulary. He doesn't choose, choose to swear or curse. It's, he made it part of his lifestyle. So he, that's the way he speaks. So the way, part of the way you speak is you just give glory to God. You aligned with the tongue, the, the, the radar hey? of the ship. What's that? Uh, radar, the radar. Okay, you align. But the whole time in what you speak, God, I love you. Thank you, I can do this for you. Thank you, you guide us. Thank you, you will guide me in Jesus' name. You are aligning in your, because in your vocabulary, is there's just the whole time alignment. This the whole time alignment. 
because of you made it part of your vocabulary. I'm not saying become spooky spiritual. I'm not saying you can say nothing else except scriptures. <coughs> but align yourself. Tell your neighbor, align yourself. So align yourself with the word of God and what he is saying. Are you with me? So while you're working, do that. When you walk somewhere, when you walk somewhere, when you drive, why not starting to pray in tongues? Oh, okay, I must remember to pray in tongues. That's good. Do that. No, but it's like a law. You know, it is a law. You don't put in the clutch. No, I'm, not, I'm, I'm free. I'm not under the law. I'm not going to put in the clutch. I'm not going to. I'm just going for first gear. I'm free. From first, I'm going to go to rrr for reverse. Okay, let's try to be stupid. And I call it, I'm free. I'm not under the law. There's certain things that just work a certain way. Are you with me? So I need to get into the word. I cannot just say it's prayer. Driving a car is not just about a clutch. Prayer, yes. Faith, speak the word. Get into the word. Meditate the word. Eat the word. Memorize the word. Worship Him. Think upon Him. Are you with me? And then, while the enemy is putting that stress, that temptation, that fear, that thing on your way, while it's there, you will still do this. In spite of, like we many times say, in spite of that, I will still. In spite of, I will still. In spite of, I will still. While this is still happening, it will not affect me, first of all. I will use this as opportunity. May God help you. May God help me. Because guys, things are going to get worse in many ways. And you better know what to pray against and what to pray how to get through. I will guide you. I will lead you through the fire. I will lead you through the desert. I will lead. You need to know what fire you must pray against, what fire you must go through, what fire you must say, God, if you protect me or not, I will get in. Because God wants to show himself in the fire that he's with his children. Who's with the church? Who's with the church? Who's that, who's that one with the church there in Bloemfontein? Talking about the church. Us, but also others and others. Who's, who's that with the church? And there's a, a shock wave going through Ukraine because... Jesus is manifesting himself in, the, himself in the fire. And even this worldly king seeing that, asking, confused. This worldly heathen king. Who is with them? They, are, they were three, now they are four. And you can pray against the fire. But what a, I cannot say hell of a waste, stay eh? Of a life of that Christian. Fighting against the fire. Instead of saying, God, give me the grace for what I'm going to go through, that you will be glorified. You will be seen. You will be seen in the fire that I'm thrown in. Of course, the church, has, the church is thrown in a fire out there in Ukraine and some other places there. And everything, so many, so many, so many things that are shaken. But may there be a crying out to realize this life is nothing. I can be here, everything, no war, no nothing. The next moment, boom, it's gone. May God give us all the grace to understand that. Are you with me? Hello? So while you're working, make sure that there is not, that you're building a life. And what is building the life is the demon of stress is building a life in you. I'm working, but I'm not building the life. I'm working, and this spirit of performance is building my life. I'm working, but this fear of, of lack, the fear of lack is building my life. I'm working because I have a fear that there will not be enough provision. And in my work, and what I work, there's a spirit building my life. And that's a spirit of fear. That's building my life. But when you work based on the word of God, Holy Spirit is building. Hello? 
And Christ through, through us building his church. <coughs> and he's building out the church. So don't have a waste of a life by working and you do it and you trust God that he will provide. But still, what is, while you are doing this, the spirit that is working is the spirit of fear. That they will not be enough. While you are working, the devil can be very successful. He's waiting for you to start to work so that that, that hojas can establish what they want to establish in you. That God is waiting for you to rise up so that when you work for the Lord as priest, with the Lord as a king, he will establish his kingdom in and through you. While you are working, while you are waiting, <coughs> waiting is not doing nothing, not at all. Waiting in doing nothing means you gave up. You didn't give over to God, but you gave up. There's certain rubbish we need to give up, walk away from. But there's certain things I must lay on the altar to give over unto him, over unto him. Are you... Are you here? And in the waiting, in that place of waiting is, I'm hands, hands off, I'm not in control, I don't want to take the control. So I must know what to do in a time of waiting, otherwise my waiting will be a thing of becoming unfaithful, becoming lazy, becoming, yeah, becoming a person of no accountability, or whatever we want to call it. You understand what I'm saying? I hope. While you are praying, what's happening while you're praying? I can, I can teach myself a lifestyle. One, while, while we are praying, my mind is there. I'm teaching myself the lifestyle how to compromise. So tomorrow when I walk out, <coughs> even though I know the word saying that, I'm going to do this. Why? Where did I learn that? While you were praying. While you were praying, you learned that lifestyle. Because while you were praying, you decided not to focus. While you were praying, you were busy with others' practical stuff. And also everything for the Lord. Sitting at the feet of Jesus, but your, but your mind is in the kitchen. What a waste of a life. When you are there, be in the moment. Be there. Be there with God. In what God wants to do there. You focus on him and you focus with him. You focus with him as king to see what he sees. He is saying. And you focus to him because what you do, you're going to do it for him. Amen. Are you still here? <coughs> so when you pray, you get yourself to focus. When you hear the word now, while I'm speaking, what are you doing? You're teaching yourself a blasé lifestyle not to have respect for the word of God. Hello? When the child is very young, and you're speaking, what do you want to say? And he's busy with this, and he's busy. You say, focus, look at me. Why? Because it's important to, for him to understand and to hear what you have to say to him. Not true? Now, why not in, in our relationship with God? He sees our heart. That's the problem. Many times when we say, no, God knows my heart. So if I just like this and learn how to focus, learn how to focus. You're supposed to be arrested by who he is. For some reason, you have to learn that when that ball that is not round, that uh, you know, freaky shape, when he's passed from the one to the other one and he goes beyond the line, with some poles and somebody just take the ball and put it on the grass then for some reason some thousands just go crazy and that principles are you are being taught and you understand him by law and you are there and you are stressing on the pavilion how to focus when to cheer and when to do this and when pathetic that's not true <laughs> but it was establishing you as a certain culture nothing necessarily wrong with it but why not in your walk with God? That you can see something and you can see that it's beautiful and you just can give God the glory. You can see something and it's not going to touch you, you're going to just give it to God. 
You see that guy and he's pathetic and you say, God, have mercy on him as I need it for my life. You see that guy making a pathetic decision and you say, how pathetic. Or you say, God, but for the grace of God, there goes I. You can teach yourself a certain lifestyle. So while you are going through things, get yourself in a certain lifestyle. So that things, so that we not the whole life till we die, learn how to drive the car. But God's heart is that we be able to get in the car, get to where he wants us, wherever. You must go to the Cape, and there in the Cape, that you can get out of the car, that you can do what he wants you to do at the right place. And to live that life. But hopefully it's not only in heaven that you realize that if I could only really get this whole issue of driving a car, get it right. If I could, could have get it right, I would have seen such a lot out there of what God had for me and enjoyed with him. Get these things in mind. These basic principles about the word, about your faith, about how you deal with things, about healthy relationships, about prayer, everything. Get it in line. Amen. <coughs> Hallelujah. What are we saying? The next point. The word talks about, as you know, while they were sleeping, the bridegroom came. There's a sleeping while the bridegroom would come where it's okay, where it's not unfaithful. God is not expecting you 24-7 to be alert. And sometimes in stress, we're trying to be awake and do all these things, but we never come into the place of rest. And that's what I mean, that seven days out of seven days, there's no, not two hours of sleep. Because I'm talking about a sleep that has to do with a rest in God. Where you could be at peace in God. Have peace in your heart. And in that place, oh, they fell asleep. Before the bridegroom came, they were not unfaithful. No problem with that. But it was they had a certain lifestyle. But the others, they had to, crisis management, get to, they had to now suddenly must get some extra oil. And while they were out there, he came and the, the door closed. Tomorrow, tomorrow, you can be busy with crisis management. But is he getting the extra oil that you realize I need? And the opportunities with God closes, closes. He didn't reject you. He's not going to hell. But tomorrow he's coming in a certain time for a certain opportunity with you. And you will miss it because you were so in crisis management to get all these stuff in order that you didn't see the opportunity. And the door closed. Knocking in vain on the door. The opportunity is finished. The opportunity is gone. God doesn't, doesn't live, love you less. He still loves you the same amount. Still passionate about you. Still believing in you. Still believing tomorrow, the day after tomorrow can be a new, a new, a new opportunity. But somewhere we need to get beyond trying to drive a car. <sighs> Get your feet off the clutch so it is not just ah! you're doing everything perfect, 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 perfect. But your foot is still on the clutch and the poor engine. You know, you're so passionate, you're everything, everything is just going and the engine is ah! going, you're going nowhere. Just leave the clutch. And everything will be going there. The other guy that is not putting the accelerator there, just there. He's going much quicker, much faster, effortless. He's there already. You didn't put the accelerator there. You put the accelerator there and you are dead. The engine is dead. The engine is gone. Your life is just... Ah! In certain areas. In the past, never but again, but you with me. Is you not here? Some of you. 
What am I saying? Then you can write there, Acts 13 verse 2. While they were praying, while they were worshipping, Holy Spirit said. My brother and my sister, so many times God wants to speak. While you worship, Holy Spirit will speak to you. But like uh, while you worship, uh, what you hear is some other chacha voices. Oh, we are singing the song the 20th time. We sing the song, what on earth? I don't know the song. I'm frustrated. So instead of worshiping God, I turn my, my back there and I focus on this some other wara spirit thing that is not from God. <coughs> instead of, you can at least read the words. Don't try and sing it. You're going to disturb everybody around you. If you don't know that melody, or come to know the melody, but otherwise read it, and in your reading, worship Him with your lifestyle. So that tomorrow, so that tomorrow, you see, even on a Sunday, you started to learn how to read the circumstances while worshiping God. Read your opportunities while worshiping God. Read what you go through and read it correctly. Not read it so that you can understand everything, no. But in the midst of the reading, you're worshiping Him. Amen. But we can say one sentence now, and someone will read it with the spirit of stress, somebody with the spirit of performance, someone with the spirit of religion, someone with the spirit of God. While that verse is being read right now, while that is happening, certain different spirits will be work be at work. All depends who you chose to have relationship with. Revelation 3.20 Speaking to the children of God. Yes, we use it for somebody to accept Christ to become a child of God. Yes, it's good. But the main theological perspective context is God is speaking to the church. See, I'm standing at, knocking at the door of the church. I'm standing at the door knocking at the door of my sons and my daughters. If they hear my knock and open, that's the problem. Sometimes we just hear the knock and then we open. But who the hell said you must open when you hear a knock? I stand at the door and I knock when you hear my voice. So there's a voice of God, but it's on the other side of the door. It's not clear. Oh, I must first hear it clear. So if God must open the door himself, then I will come invite him closer. No. On the other side of the door. <coughs> you must hear his voice on that side of the door that is closed. And God will wait there. He will not open the door. Because he won't choose to have an intimate relationship with you. And he wants you to recognize his voice. On the other side of the door, of the knocking. You cannot recognize the voice if you never come to learn to know his voice. If you never get into the word. If you never get into the Word of God, if you never come to, to understand His voice, His heart in the Word, you will not be able to recognize, because my brother, my sister, there will be voices, there will be knocking. And with a lot of knocking like this, God will not stop knocking. But you know, there's a knock from a, from a demon of stress. Knocking at your door, uh, inviting you, uh, in saying... You know, look at that, look at that. It's just, it's just stressful, you know? Not, invite me in so that you can stress. Okay, let me invite stress in. Who the freak will do that? Nobody. But you recognize the voice and you invite him in. You invite him in. You accept because you can identify with this is really stressful, and this is really that, and in the place of honesty. Yes, you must be honest, but you don't need to open the door. You only open the door for truth. You only open the door for truth. You must be honest about, yes, 
I feel stressed. And that voice on the other side is, is really stressful. It's really stressful. Open the door so that you and stress and the spirit, uh, the demon of stress can have a very good fellowship. A time of fellowship together. Yeah. While you're busy, while you're in the house, not sitting doing nothing, while you're busy in the house, there's a knock. And beyond the knock, there's a voice. The voice is not clear. The voice beyond the knock is on the other side of a door. And because you came to know his voice, you open the door. But you open the door and he will come in. And he will close that door. And that other spirits cannot come in. That other spirits that you flirt with other rabbis, you sit with negativity and you speak with to others about negativity. It will just happen. Negativity will knock at your door. Fear will knock at your door and you will just know and you will just open it. You open it because you identify with that talk. You identify with that bitterness, you identify with that revenge, you identify with whatever that thing would be. Ah, uh -uh, that's not. That's not. So while, while you're working, there will be a knocking, my brother, my sister, and you open the door and then God will say, no, stop the work first. We're going to have some time together. May God help you to understand that. While you're praying, like we, we said that, hey, while you're praying, your heart can be this. While you're praying, your, your mind can be there. And you learn how to focus on God, but actually not focus on God. Go through the motions of prayer, but your heart is there. Get out of that place. Because that means tomorrow you will go there, even though you know God is saying left. Your conscience and is saying go to the left. You cannot go to the right, but you will go to the right. Where, how? Why will you be okay with going to the right? Because when you prayed last night, you established more and more the lifestyle of, I can pray and speak to God, but actually my mind and my heart is there. Learn how to drive a car. That when you pray, you learn how to put your heart and your focus and your everything in one place. Everybody say, while you're praying. Then also, while you believe. Uh, is it not James that says, if, if you say you believe, while you're now believing, then what, what are you going to do? What are you going to do about it? Because the devils believe also. And while they are believing, they will try to bring all hell into your life because this is their last chance. They know. They know. They know what's going to happen to them. They know the end of everything. And because they know... While they believe, they will destroy as far as possible whoever can be a fool to allow them to come in. But while you believe, your faith as a gift from God, why a gift? Because it came from the Word of God. You open the gift, that's the, actually the Word of God. You open it up, faith, through hearing, hearing through the Word of God. And that faith, with that faith, you will do great exploits. With that faith, you will honor Him. With that faith, you will see breakthroughs. With that faith, the heavens will be opened up and hell will be shut. Oh, Amen. So it's while you have the right kind of faith, what are you going to do now? <coughs> How will you honor him with that faith? Okay. I will leave that one. All right. We're going for a quick one this time. Paul, 1 Corinthians 2.2. You can write there, 1 Corinthians 2.2. I've decided, oh, jette, I get my voorgeneem. I have determined. That's what he said. What is some translation saying? I've determined. I've made that decision. I've made a certain decision before I come into the situation. What decision? That I will do this and that and that. No, I made a decision that while certain things will be happening tomorrow, I will do the following. He says, that while I am among you, where while I will be physically among you, I will choose to know nothing except Christ and Him crucified. Because the Corinthians, they had a lot of issues. They had a major lot of issues that he had to go and deal with. But right in the beginning of this first letter, he says, 
I've made the des- decision that while I'm going to be there, tomorrow, while you're going to be at the work, you've made today the decision that while you will be in that meeting, while you'll be in that challenge, while you will be in that, in that place with all that people, while you will be there, this is the following that will happen. Make that decision today. Paul said, this is how I'm going to handle this chaos of this church. Decided when I'm going there, I will know among you nothing. Don't, I don't want to hear all your issues. No, but, but just hear our heart. You must hear what I have to say. Oh, shut up. He didn't say it like that. But uh, he said, I want to, don't know, I don't know, want to, I not want to know all your issues. I want to know Christ and Him crucified. Christ where? The resurrected Christ. From where? In your spirit. Because your spirit is perfect. Your spirit, the fullness of God is dwelling in your spirit. God is in your spirit. <coughs> in your spirit, there's a testimony also. But in your spirit, the resurrected Christ is living through his spirit. The resurrected Christ in your spirit. Perfect. I want to know what is in your spirit. I want to know the excellence in your spirit. I want to know the excellence in your spirit. How? Because you need to know the excellence in your spirit. Let's say that there's excellence in my spirit. Okay, let's say if we believe it this time. There's excellence in my spirit. And you need to know it, and we need to remind one another, and we need to focus on the excellence in one another that is called Christ. You cannot just see that person, and you see that person, you feel you're going to slaughter him. If you don't first see the excellence in his spirit, you have no right to speak into his life. You have no right to deal with that situation. You have no right. If you don't start with this excellence in that man, in his spirit, then you will have faith in that man. May God help you. May God help you. That is, I want to know among you Christ. That's excellence in your spirit. And secondly, Christ crucified. Why both? Christ crucified in that man's soul. Because in our souls there can be a lot of rubbish. A lot of mindsets, a lot of things, a lot of thoughts that need to be taken captive, a lot of strongholds that need to be broken, a lot of chachas where the, uh, whatever demons can come and squatter in a place where they have no right, actually. <coughs> in that place, I need to know, Paul says, how you crucify your flesh, how you deal with your rubbish, how you deal with your mindsets, how you deal with your thoughts, patterns, how you deal with that emotions, how you deal with it, your temptations. I want to know how you take all of that to one place, and that is to be crucified with Christ, because you no longer live, Christ lives through you. Where? From your spirit. You are not dead. Your spirit is alive. But in your soul, you need to be frack. There's no English word for that one. Do it as death, but frack is more an active form of uh, death. Okay. You need to deal with that. I need to know, do you know the excellence in you? And do you know how to deal with your rubbish and your flesh? I have decided, I get my voorgeneem, that this is what I want to know while I am among you and I'm working among you and I'm walking among you and I'm with you. This is what I decided before the time. What will happen while I am there. While you are in the meeting tomorrow, while you are in your relationships, while you are in whatever you will go in and through. What do you decide today? What will happen? What will your attitude be? Are you still with me? Okay. We're going nearly for landing. Okay. Hebrews 12, 1. Second last. Second last. It's actually point six. Hebrews 12, verse 1. 12, verse 1. What does it say? Therefore, while we have a lot of different translations, therefore, since we have, <coughs> while this is the truth, while there is this cloud of witnesses all around you, let us run the race with endurance. Let, let us run the race with endurance. The eyes set on Jesus Christ, the author, perfecter of your faith. 
But if you don't establish the testimonies, the, the, the witnesses in your heart, the witnesses in your if you don't establish that, you will be focusing on that. Now, how can you run the race and you focus there on the pavilion? That guy is not encouraging me. He's pointing his finger at me. That guy is doing this. That guy is doing that. You're going to make a mess, man. You're going to look like a clown. And it's the fact that that guy is booing you, and that guy is throwing a sign, that one is throwing, uh, pulling a face at you, and that guy, and that guy, this is a guy in a no, uh, normal race. <sighs> The problem is not what they're doing. The problem is why can you not focus on the race set before you? Your eyes were fixed on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of your faith. The perfect one. You run towards perfection. You run towards the per perfection because he is the excellence inside. And he is in front of you. His excellence in front of you. Your eyes are focused on excellence. The excellence of the universe. Jesus Christ. But he has put that patterns of excellence inside of you so that you can run the race excellent. Ah, are you with me? Are you still here? But I want you to go and write down, please, man. Go and write down the testimonies. <coughs> go and write down the witnesses. Who is giving witness in you? Because you can have a cloud of witnesses. And the one sitting there is a the spirit of rejection. Then because of that, the spirit of performance, so that you will not be rejected. Then there's a spirit of fear of rejection that will sit next to it. Then there's a spirit of comparison, uh, why you feel rejected. Then there's this, another spirit that you feel threatened by that person because that guy is doing it better than you. Then there's a spirit. So we can name a hundred witnesses, all in unity, cheering you on to make a hell of a mess of your life. But you need to get those guys out and establish the cloud of witnesses that you see in the word. Because of in Hebrews 11, hey, where <coughs> the writer of Hebrew is speaking about all these witnesses. What did Abram do? What did this man do by faith? Excellent, excellent, excellent. Oh, they all had mistakes. But see what they've done correctly. David and Sarah and, and Abram and this man and that man and that man. And, and they say, if we must write about all these guys, hey amen, there will not be enough books to write all of this down. Just before chapter 12. And then he says, therefore, therefore, while you have all these testimonies, now I want you also to write down the testimonies of your life. The witnesses. You have a witness when you gave your life to Christ. You have a witness when you make certain decisions. Yeah, the enemy comes, but he was fake. Because just look at what you've done afterwards. You made some wrong decisions. But at that moment, you were genuine with God. You take that and you put it in. I made the decision with God. Oh, come on, man. How many times you had a time with God in worship? Time in prayer, time with the word, and you make certain decisions. And then afterwards, yes, there's things that didn't work out. Why must that decision nullify this decision? Through the blood of Christ, that decision is nullified. And this decision under the Holy Spirit will count. And with that, we'll build further. I will learn from that rotten decision I made. But I will build on the, this decision I made through the grace of God. Amen. I remember I wasn't saved yet, but I, I don't know if you remember stuff like I believe so. You know that even before you gave your life to Christ, there were certain times that you cried out to the Lord, not just when you were in trouble with your dad or mom, but that you <laughs> cried out to the Lord and certain things happened. I was, I don't know, 10 years old, 11, and... Uh, at one stage, I just said, God, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I read the Ten Commandments, and I realized, oh, two out of ten for everyone. I'm totally gone. And I said, God, how am I going to do this? And I said, I'm going to make this decision, and it must be final, that this is how I'm going to do this Ten Commandments correctly. I'm going to do this accurately. I don't know if I got saved that. I don't think so. But I don't know how that would work. But in any case... <coughs> I wrote in my own handwriting the Ten Commandments. 
took the two papers, I took some glue and I glued it to one another, the inside what I wrote. I said, this is unchangeable, this is going to be like this forever in my life, I will keep this, I will keep this. And I believe God took that, I don't believe the devil guided me. And you don't believe it, afterwards I still broke every commandment, <laughs> even up to today. Not all today, maybe. <laughs> what am I saying? Treasure those moments. Go and find that moments. Are you with me? Go and find those moments with God. You know, I believe there's something prophetic that God has placed in my life. But, and many times with, God says, go there, do this, go there, go there, and do, then do that. And, uh, that was part of the grace of God with how even we got the farm, how God just did it. Even though it wasn't at all <coughs> as perfect accuracy, not at all. But then in frustration, go on with what you feel in your heart. Go on with what you feel in your heart, my brother. While you are busy, while I'm busy with, with, such, with a lot of stuff there at, at, uh, in the church and with Creari there at, in Universitas, Still I feel I must get out here, get out here. You know the story, you've heard it a hundred times. And how at the end of the day God just gave this farm for free. But it was not because I had this peace in the guidance. I had this frustration, man. I said, God, what am I doing? Why am I going out here? I was throwing sometimes like a tantrum. Holy one, if you find that. And I would drive past here to that seven hectare plot that we, were, we wanted to buy. But the emotion, while I was frustrated, while I was type of throwing a tantrum, while I felt, while I had the voices saying, you're wasting your time, there's a lot of work to do. What are you doing here? Be careful. While you're doing even God's work. Holy Spirit could guide you a certain way. And at the end of the day, here we are sitting. Because of God's grace. Because of God's grace. Once in Holland, we had an outreach there. And I, from Holland, I went with YVM guys to Romania. But I was free one day. So I was walking um, in, the, in Amsterdam. But the more, one morning I said, God, is this something we must do today? Like me and God. You know, just like sometimes asking something unique. You know, oh man, go and do something like this. I encourage you. So I just got the thing, I remember the first name, Harlemer Weg. And then another one also with a Har. And to the right in the next was some something. So I got on the tram. In Harlemer Weg. So we're going, and I saw on the map, there is such a street, and from that street, there is such a other street, also that name. So I'm very excited. Now we go, and with that, that turn, got on that tram, now we go, and I say, well, okay, Lord, what now? Here we go, here we go, what now? Maybe for, I don't know how long, maybe more than a kilometer out, and I felt, I must get out here, and they were flats, but it's like people from a different uh, nationality. <coughs> a lot of Moroccan, Moroc Moroccans and Algerians staying there in that region. I was just praying for them, God, that they will be saved, and this will happen, that will happen, that will happen, that. And I saw one guy in a car, and I felt, let's go and speak to him, you know? I felt a lot, and speak to people, so it wasn't like first one, 100%. Spoke to this guy, no, he's a Christian, and this, and this, and this, he can, he knows English, he knows Dutch, and he knows Berber, that was the language, Berber, uh, for the Moroccans and the Algerians in the certain mountain area, specific, specific place in Algeria and Morocco, Berber, okay, pray for him, and God will guide him, God will use him, get back to the base in, 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 with the YWAM guys, I told them, this is a God, they freaked out. Said, we are praying for a guy that can help us with translations that's a Christian, that's spiritual, that knows Berber and Dutch and English. But it was just a moment of, ah, 
God, what can we do together today? Are you with me? I could have given up after the fifth person that I spoke to. That was like unsuccessful. You know, okay, just go home. It was nice, but go with God sometimes. That while you are there, while you're supposed to prepare to go to Romania with this outreach, just so by the way, Lord, is there something we must do now here? You go into that place, man. Come on, get that as a lifestyle in driving your car. Go after second gear, not to sixth gear. You're not going to go anywhere. Maybe the third gear when you go to the Northridge Mall is, God, what do you want to do today? Tell five people that I have an appointment with them. And then just do it with five. And it, it seems to me you seems to you it meant nothing to them. You don't know. You don't know. I'm challenging you to go with God and that while things are happening in your life, you will still do the following. And you will be amazed with this that will happen while you are doing this. While you are buying your groceries and praying for God's provision. God is on an agenda. If you can just only seek the kingdom just right now. If you can just focus away from your needs right now. Because there's two people walking past you that I want to minister to. Get into that place. Get into that lifestyle. Make it part of how to drive a car. Okay. Are you still here? So the only thing I say is <coughs> you establish those testimonies around you. Those testimonies around you, you establish it in the correct way. And you will see what God will do. Because at the end of the day, there's a testimony in your spirit that's excellent, 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 excellent. We spoke about Christ in you, in your spirit. Now it's uh, Romans 8, 16, hey, that says, The Holy Spirit testify, he gives you a testimony, with your spirit. With, not just in your spirit, with your spirit. Because in your spirit, there's already a testimony. There's already a testimony that is from heaven in your spirit. You have a testimony from heaven. Let's say, I have a testimony from heaven in my spirit. Now the Holy Spirit wants to testify with you. Because, but He will only testify about the Word of God. So the testimony about the Word of God is already in your spirit. But if you don't open it up and learn it so that your soul can... Vocalize it so that your soul can, can give interpretation. That can, only hope, that can only happen when you allow the Holy Spirit that will give testimony about Christ and what He has done and explain everything to you when the Holy Spirit with your spirit testify. First of all, about your sonship. You have not given me a spirit of slavery to fear again, but the spirit of adoption into sonship. As your spirit will cry out, Abba. That means Papa. First thing God will establish is identity. Your identity. Understand your identity. Under the, your, your identity. Are you with me? Are you with me? I know and while I'm speaking, it's amazing the impact that uh, a one o'clock in the second service can do. You know, while I'm speaking, you know. The more we get to one o'clock, the more. <laughs> Amazing miracle. Hallelujah. But uh, bottom line, bottom line, last point, point seven. Isaiah 55, 6. <coughs> Seek the Lord while. While what? While he may be found. God is so available for you today. My brother, my sister, he's so available. He's so there for you to be found. He's so there for you to be found. While there's still grace. While we are still in the season of grace. While you have still the opportunity. Seek him while he may be found. There's a lady, Amy Grant, that, that, that uh, she was walking at that stage very straight. In the, in, in the gospel. Gospel singer, 
who once with a show I will never forget 30, 35 years ago. She said, the furthest God will be from you is so far. So far. Because that is the, how's the English, furthest, that you can push him away. He will not be further away, because he will never leave you, never forsake you. So you can push him away, but the moment you reach out to him, there he will be there. And he will come close. As you draw near to him, he will draw near to you. He's not away. He's not away. He will never leave you, never forsake you. But he's there. Because only you can push him away. He will not go. And when you reach out to him, seek the Lord while he may be found. Maybe you've walked away and you've brought other rubbish closer to you. But while you're walking, while you're working, while you are being, while you are still working through depression or working through this, working through that, working through uh, temptation, working through compromise, work, while you are working through that, what will you do? How will you worship? Open your mouth and worship your God in the midst of your enemies. And see what he, see the salvation of God in that place. But you don't worship, first of all, for everything to change. You worship because you are a worshiper. Your identity is established. And while other things are not in line around you, and sometimes in your soul, please, my brother, my sister, respect him. And from the, the main calling God has given you, worship him in spirit and truth. God, come and help us. Help us to see this, Lord. God, forgive us for... Many times while things are happening not in, according to our standards, we, we align ourselves with that, whatever the enemy can bring in the world. <coughs> Forgive us, Lord. It doesn't matter what we go through, Lord, while we are going through certain stuff. We choose today that we will go according to our identity and our calling and our destiny. And that is to say we love you. We honor you. We worship you, Lord. And that we establish from our hearts and you know, with our mouths a lifestyle. God, we, we don't have to crash the car the whole time and learn afresh how to drive a car. God, help us through your spirit to look into the patterns of life in your word so that we can get into the car, get beyond the basic principles and go to the places where you want to surprise us in seeing and beholding what you're going to do, what we can do with you, what we can do for you. And sometimes just stand amazed at your power, your beauty, your awesomeness. God, I pray that for every man and woman in this place, that they will have a significant life, a significant life with you. A significant life because excellence You've, depart, you've, you've imparted that excellence in their spirit. Everything else that is not from you, let it depart in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We're going out of darkness, out of fear, out of depression, out of that lack, out of that intimidation, into the fullness of what you have for us. So I pray that for every man, woman in this place, and that we will never, never, never be reluctant, but that we will always, always be grateful for every, every opportunity that you are giving us. I pray that you will touch every man and woman in this place to come into this type of lifestyle of significance. We thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. And all say Amen. Tell your neighbor you can have a significant life.